India probably thought they were flying to the UK for a back-to-back -back five test tour to be played largely on green scenes. India were probably right, however, the summer of 2018 has so far thrown a curveball. India start their English campaign with a T20 match in Manchester early on Tuesday evening, but it isn't the Manchester that they are used to. There has been no substantial rain here for weeks, tomatoes limp on in garden dust bowls, water butts are empty and the smell of burning drifts. Across the city from the fires on the hills at Saddleworth and Bolton, releasing, possibly, pollution stored in the peatlands since the Industrial Revolution. In the recreational game, players are having to pinch themselves. Seasons usually punctuated by rain abandonments are racing ahead. Once lush outfields are tinder dry, yellowing and sharp underfoot. Pitches are cracking under the strain. And that's before the hose pipe ban that is surely on the way, unless the weather breaks. Spare a thought then for the professional groundsman a woman, presented with a summer heatwave after a long, damp, cold winter and early spring. Down at Chelmsford, Stuart Carrison is enjoying a rare day off on Tuesday, watching the tennis at Wimbledon. Carrison was appointed head groundsman at Essex in 1991 at only 23, and he is respected for his vast experience, genial nature and a penchant for featuring little Lego figures on his Twitter account. He's been on the books at Essex for even longer, arriving on a youth training scheme in 1984, but this is one of the driest spells that he can remember. We've only had half a millimetre of rain in the last five weeks, whereas we've had 100 millilitres of water evaporate out of the ground, he says. I've had a look back through my records and this is the least amount of rain we've ever had in a month. The conditions have meant long hours and lots of early mornings and late nights when the temperatures are lower and the conditions are better for watering. We haven't got a fancy irrigation of the test grounds and the biggest problem is that we can't get enough water in the wicket. It really has been ridiculously hot. I might put a sprinkler on for 7 hours overnight, but within 2 hours it is dry again. The pitches are tending to get slower and starting to crack. A couple of our lads went to Cape Town last year too play club cricket, but they ended up having a two-month holiday because the cricket was cancelled because of the severe drought. I don't think it would come to that here as we get dispensation from the water companies, but we've got to be aware that we don't waste water. We water the pitch and the practice area but we don't water our outfield. Should the heat wave continue, and the rain, if it comes, proves to be the wrong type of rain, sudden torrential downpours rather than nice steady precipitation, Carrison can envisage having to cut back his watering further. Back in the northwest, Andy R. Michael is watching the summer unfold with interest. He worked at Cranfield University in 2012 as a research assistant, a post part funded by the ECB, looking at the sustainability of cricket. He came up with a number of recommendations for clubs in times of drought. His research has led him to a skepticism of the psychological and behavioural approaches to the challenges sport faces in a time of climate change. He is now in favour of a more sociological approach, even if it means questioning fundamental beliefs. We've done the science to death, he says, the science says the situation is serious but sport just doesn't take it seriously. He advocates thinking the unthinkable, why have we decided to play cricket on a big lump of clay soil at times of weather extremes? We should be considering drop-in pitches, plastic pitches, cricket hubs rather than scattered clubs. People may pull at this vision of the future, but this scorching summer the pitches are still very much a product of our capricious climate, which means that England will be playing India on a series of dry turners. Almost inevitably, the English spinning conveyor belt has hit a technical hitch.
Hampshire leg spinner Mason Crane is out for the rest of the season with a stress fracture of the back. Jack Leach's season has been interrupted, first of all by breaking his thumb in the nets during a warm-up involving a dog throw at Taunton, then by concussion after being hit on the head by Morn Morkel. Moeen Ali seems to have been discarded by the Red Bull selectors, which leaves Dom Bess in possession, veteran of two tests. This combination of heatwave, injury-prone spinners and opponents who are the best players of spin in the world, makes the upcoming Test Series a potentially a tinderbox one for England. But there is an upside, for Kerrison at least. To be honest I rather like it, he says. If the outfield dies back it is not the end of the world, it'll grow back. And the tan's coming along really well. This is an extract taken from The Spin, The Guardian's weekly cricket email. To subscribe, just visit this page and follow the instructions.